Hello, this is William from Visual Components. In this video, I'm going to show you how to connect a Beckhoff TwinCat PLC to a Visual Components 4.0 product that are installed on the same computer. So before you get started, make sure you have a TwinCat PLC, a Visual Components 4.0 product, and Visual Studio installed on the same computer. Now, whenever you want to connect a PLC or server to your Visual Components product, you need to turn on the connectivity feature. And I'll show you how to do that now. So in your Visual Components product, click the File tab, click Options, and then click this section here called Add-on. So here's the connectivity feature. So notice you can turn it on or off, and whenever you change this setting, you have to restart the application. So right now the connectivity feature is disabled, so I'll click this button here to enable it. I'll then click OK. I'll then restart my Visual Components product. So let's actually quickly reopen it in the video and the application has been restarted. So if we look above the ribbon, we can notice a tab called Connectivity. So if you click that, here are the controls for establishing a connection to a PLC or a server. Now, in this case, we're gonna to connect to a PLC, and we want the PLC to control the logic of some components being simulated in the 3D world. So let's actually configure the layout before we set up the PLC project. I'll click the Home tab, go to the eCatalog panel, and under Models by Type, click Feeders, Let's add a basic feeder to the 3D world. And now let's connect a conveyor to this interface on the feeder. Under Models by Type, expand conveyors. Click Visual Components. And let's use a conveyor that already has a sensor on it. So in the search box, I'll type sensor. And that finds one item called sensor conveyor. So I'll drag it into my layout. I'll then use the PMP command to plug the conveyor into the feeder. So if I now run the simulation, the feeder creates parts. The parts move along the path of the conveyor, and notice that the sensor here can detect when parts arrive at this location. So with our PLC, we can have an input from the simulation that sets the value of notifying it when a part arrives at this sensor. Let's reset our simulation, and now configure our PLC project in Visual Studio. So in your Windows toolbar, do a search for TwinCat, and notice in this case I'm using TwinCat XAE, or Extended Automation Engineering with Visual Studio 2015. So I'll run that program. And then on the start page, I'll click this link here to create a new TwinCat project. You can name the project whatever you want to, and then click OK. And Visual Studio will do the magic for you and create the project. And you can see it listed here in the Solution Explorer pane. What you want to do now is right click PLC and then click Add New Item. And we're going to create a standard PLC project that can uh, get the input of a sensor and also send out or write the values of variables in our simulation. So let's actually rename this project to be Sensor Conveyor. And then click the Add button. So this will set up the PLC with a program that we can edit. And you can see that program here. If I expand the project in the Solution Explorer pane, and then expand POUs. So go ahead and double click Main Program. Uh, we're not going to do any global variable lists in this video, so I'm going to assume you already know how to create those. But in our main program, let's create some local variables. So we need to know when a part is at a sensor, so it's either a true or false value. So I'll say part at sensor. I'll then use a colon to define this variable's type, which is bool for boolean, and add a semicolon to end the statement. So the language used in TwinCat PLC is structured text. Now, after a part reaches the sensor, we want to count how many times parts have arrived at that location. So I'll say part count colon, and we're going to use an integer, so its type is int with a semicolon. Let's now add the logic for incrementing our part count variable every time a part reaches the sensor. So down here in this pane, we'll say if part at sensor, then we'll set the value of part count, so part count. I'll use a colon and an equal sign because I'm setting its value. I'll reference the current value of the variable plus, let's increment by one. And locally, let's actually set the value of our part at sensor variable to be false. So after the sensor is triggered, we'll just set the value back to false. So part at sensor, colon equal sign, false, and the semicolon to end the statement. So this is a very simple program. So when a part is at the sensor, we're just incrementing or counting how many parts reach that sensor. Let's now go to the toolbar here and click Activate Configuration. And now it's just a matter of following the prompts given to you by Visual Studio. So I'll click OK. 
And in some cases, you might be prompted to enter in a license, so just follow the prompt and then continue on. I'm going to click OK to enter run mode. And then on the toolbar, I'll click this icon here to log in. And notice I get a prompt here, so I can have my PLC running on port 851. I'll click yes. And notice here are the values of our variables right now. So part at sensor is false, and our part count is at zero. So let's actually move our project to the right side of the screen and move our visual components product to the left side and unpin these panels to get a better view. And what we need to do now is establish a connection between this simulation and this PLC. To do that, click the connectivity tab and then in the connectivity configuration panel, click Beckoff ADS. In the server group, click add server. So this will add a new connection. And in the Edit Connection task pane, we do have a discovery service for PLC, so it listens to those common ports in a twin cat. So it found that port of 851, and there's a PLC running at that port, so I'll click it here. I'm then going to test the connection by clicking this button. And this prompt here lets me know that, yes, I can successfully connect my Visual Components product to that PLC. So I'll click OK, and to confirm this connection or establish it, I'll click the Apply button here. Notice there's a connection, and we have these variable groups. So simulation to server, notice the arrow indicates the direction of the data flow. So variables in your simulation can set the values of variables in your server or your PLC, whereas you can have this variable group, server to simulation, and notice its direction. So variables in your server or PLC can set the values of variables in your simulation. Now, right now, this connection is not active. So you can see here in this button, I can connect or disconnect from it. I'll click the button to connect to it. And if I go to the properties panel, we can see here's the connection's name. Let's actually rename this to be local PLC. And notice its connected property is now set to true, and it's listening to port 851. You also have other settings, so when you start your simulation, you can also start the program in your PLC. When you stop it, you can stop the program and whenever you reset the simulation. So in Visual Studio, you don't have to keep on clicking this button on and off. You can just you know control everything from your simulation controls here. So if we actually unpin this connectivity configuration panel and start our simulation, we can see that the connection is active, everything's going great, but nothing's happening in our PLC project. You know, the values over here, you know, the part at sensor is still set to false and our part count is still at zero. That's because we have not mapped these variables or paired them with variables in our simulation. So let's actually reset our simulation, go to our connected variables panel here. Here's our connection called local PLC, and we have those two variable groups. So we want to set the value of our PLC variables from the simulation. So I'm going to click this simulation to server variable group here. I'll then click this button called add variable pairs. And this opens an editor for establishing those maps or those pairings. So you can map component properties, behavior properties in components, or signals. So let's just use signals at the moment. So in the 3D world, we can see that a sensor conveyor does have signals. It has a start-stop signal and a sensor boolean signal. So the sensor in the conveyor uses a signal to send out a value whenever it's triggered. So a true value when a component triggers the sensor, a false value when the sensor resets. So we want to map this item here to a variable in our PLC called part at sensor. So with those two items selected, I'll then click this button called pair selected, and they are now a variable pairing, and you can notice the link there, so they are connected to each other. Let's close this out and go back to our connected variables panel. You can see there's the variable pair, has a default name, and the simulation variable is the component name, which is highlighted red, followed by a dot, or full stop, and the behavior name, which is called sensor boolean signal. You can see its type, its current value, and then if we go to the right a bit, you can see the variable it's mapped to in our server, or PLC, called main.partitsensor, and its type. So now, if we run the simulation, what do we expect to happen? Well, the sensor will be triggered, it will have a true value, which will then be updated to our part at sensor variable in our PLC, which will then increment our part count variable. So it sounds like a lot, but let's see the magic. So I'll start the simulation, and we expect the part count to count up, and it does in our PLC. It's one right now. Let's see it reach two, and it's at two. Great. Now the 
part of sensor variable, you know, the value of the sensor is being set to true and it's being reset rather quickly, so you probably won't see it in your PLC, but if you look here in the connected variables panel, you can see that the value is changing. So the part reaches the sensor and it quickly goes to true and then to false. So, yep, there you go again. Let's go ahead and stop the simulation. And let's say that when a part reaches the sensor, we want to turn off the path. Now to do that, we can use a variable in our PLC to set the value of a variable controlling this conveyor's path. And I'll show you how to do that now. Let's reset the simulation. And without logging off or, or disconnecting from our PLC connection, I'll go to the Visual Studio, click Log Out. And I can now edit my PLC project without disconnecting from the Visual Components product. So you don't have to sever that connection. You can just keep it there and edit whatever you need to. It's no problem. Whether the simulation is on, it's stopped, or it's reset. So we're going to map a variable for turning the path on and off. So we'll say path start. And this will be a Boolean value. So colon bool, semicolon. And we're going to be counting the part. But after we do that, let's actually turn the path off. So path start, set its value to be false. And we don't need to set the value of the sensor anymore, so we actually can take that away. And then we also have a condition we need to add. So if there is a part of the sensor and the path is turned on, so it's equal to true, then we're going to turn the path off else. So this is an else if statement, so E-L-S-I-F. If there's not a part at the sensor and the path is turned off, so equals false, then we're going to turn the path on. So it makes no sense to have the path turned off if the, there's no component at the sensor. So we're just going to turn it back on if it's off. So we're going to set it to be true. So it's a very simple program. So if there is a part of the sensor and the path is turned on, we know that the part reached the sensor, so we can count up, and we can turn off the path. Else, if there's not a part at the sensor and the path is turned off, well, we want to turn the path back on so a part reaches the sensor eventually. So what we can do now is go and log in and click OK to log in with the changes we made. And notice that our path start, right now it's set to false. And now we need to pair it with a variable in our conveyor. So in the connect variables group, I'm sorry, in the panel, we already use the simulation to server, so that data flow is flowing from the simulation to the server. But now we want our PLC to set the value of our simulation variable, so we're going to use this variable group here called server to simulation. So the direction of data flow is different. I'll then click add variable pairs, and we're going to use the signals again in the sensor conveyor. And it's this signal here called start stop. And now, if I expand the main program in our PLC, notice what happens. It's not showing the change I made. So if I want to show that change, I just need to reload this. So I'll right click and then click reload server structure. And if I expand main again, there's our path start variable. So I have those two items selected. I'll then click this button to pair them. Close out of the editor. And in the connected variables panel, let's see that and it notice we actually made a mistake here we added the start stop variable pair for our signal to the simulation server group so we actually need to change this or move it to this group down here so with this variable pair selected you don't have to delete it you can just move it so I'll right click and then click this command here called move variables and then I have to choose what group I want to move the variable to it's server to simulation so when the path sensor is triggered, the PLC is going to set the value of a variable, which will then turn off the conveyor's path. So this has one direction of data, this other variable group has a different. So we can see we have the sensor boolean signal for reading in the value in our PLC, and we have one variable pair for setting the value of a variable in our simulation. So let's see how this works. Run the simulation, and notice the start stop is set to true, and when the part reached the sensor, it stopped the path. Great. Now one more thing I want to mention. Let's actually reset this. I'm going to go to my connectivity configuration panel. Notice that you have a mode for updating your variable pairs in your groups. So right now it's set to cyclic, but what you can do is you can select the variable group, either in this panel or in the connected variables panel. Then go to the properties group and notice that you can turn it on or off. So if I actually disable 
the simulation to server variable group, notice I'm no longer getting the value of that path sensor. So if I start the simulation, I see that nothing's happening now. So the part did not stop at the sensor. Let's actually turn it back on and see if that works. And yep. So notice you can make changes to this variable groups while you're running a simulation and you can turn it on or off. But while the simulation is running, you cannot change the update mode. So how the values of those variable pairs are updated between the PLC or server and your visual components product. So if we reset and use an event based update mode. So whenever there's an event in the 3D world, run the simulation. You can see that it still works out. So let's actually reset the simulation. And before I end the video, I'm going to show you how to create a timer, which you can then you know, run a process time of a part that it's at the sensor, and then turn the path back on. So it is a lot easier to set up using you know, functions or a ladder in your PLC, but I'll show you how to use uh, just structured text in this case. So in my PLC, go and log out from it and make some changes. So I'm going to use a variable for turning on my timer. So I'll say that's called process part. I'll make it a Boolean value. I'll then create a variable for my timer. So I'll say process timer. And that variable is going to be TON. And then let's go ahead and set our timer or declare it. So our process timer. So its input when it's going to start is going to be, so we'll say in is equal to our process part variable. And what that means is that when this process part variable is true, the timer is going to be active. It's going to be on. And then we have to define how long we want to run this uh, timer for. So we actually can just use a constant here. So we'll use PT colon equals. And we use a time constant, so that's going to be a T, a hash, and I'll use five seconds, so T hash five and an S. Add the parentheses and add the semicolon. Now, in order to trigger this timer to run, what we're going to do is when we turn off the path, we're going to set the process part variable to be true. And then after our timer has finished running, so we'll say if process timer dot Q, it's output, so this will be true when the timer is finished. Then we want to set the process part to false. So let's actually see how this works out. So I'll click login to save the changes. And let's see how this works out with our simulation. So we don't think we need to map anything else or create any new variable pairs. So the part stops. And let's see after five seconds what happens. OK, the path did not turn back on. So let's actually stop right here. And I think I know what to do. We actually need to set the value of our process uh, variable, I'm sorry, our path at sensor variable in our PLC back to false when the timer is finished. So let's make that change now. Notice I stopped the simulation. I didn't reset it, but I do need to log out of the PLC to make a change. So after our timer has finished, the process is over. And then we'll say part at sensor equals false. So now let's go ahead and log in again with those changes. I'll reset the simulation and run it again. And now show me that magic. So the part stops. And then after five seconds, it should turn back on the path. And it does. Great. All right, this concludes the video. If you have any more questions, please feel free to visit our forum at forum.visualcomponents.com. And as always, I hope you have a wonderful day.